Welcome everyone, here is a beginner's guide to the S23 Ultra. So let's start off with the buttons and ports on this phone. So on the right hand side, we have the power button here. If you just click this once, it will lock the phone and then you know unlock it. You can also double tap the phone to lock and unlock, okay. We also have the volume rockers here, so this just increases the volume reduces the volume. There's some key combinations we can do with the uh, volume rockers, but I will cover those later. At the top here, if I just unlock the phone, you can see we have the under the uh, display camera. Uh, this is a front camera. We also have, you may not be able to see, but a speaker near the top, which you'll hear when you take phone calls. At the bottom of the S23 Ultra, we have the charging port. So you connect your charging cable here to charge. We have the speaker system at the bottom and we have the S Pen. So the S Pen is a stylus that you can use to take notes and uh, stuff like that. So you just click and release and you can see the S Pen will partially come out and you just pull it out fully to remove and to place back in you just need to click back in and you can see it will fit flushly. It doesn't matter if you put the S Pen back in the wrong way, you can see it will still fit, no problem. To the right of the SIM card, which my case is covering, uh, to the charging port even, there is the SIM card slot. If you haven't inserted a SIM card, I'll have a tutorial in the description. So heading over to the lock screen here, we have these uh, shortcut buttons. And if you just swipe up, you can see it is going to uh, initiate the flash. If I swipe up here, it will initiate the camera. You can customize what these buttons do in the settings, but I'll cover that later. We then have here the fingerprint icon. Uh, this phone has a under display fingerprint sensor. So you just place your finger in the sensor and boom. If you haven't set up the uh, fingerprint, I'll cover that in a little bit. We also have at the top the carrier. So I have two carriers, so it has a little line to separate. And then you have the alarm symbol, which shows alarms active. A uh, Bluetooth symbol, which shows Bluetooth's on. Wi-Fi, your cellular connections, and your battery percentage. And we have the time here and the date. When we go to the home screen here, you're going to see uh, your own selection of apps. Not all of the apps will show up. So to view all of the apps, you need to slide up like this and you're gonna see all of the applications installed on your uh, phone. You also have a search bar here to search up for the application you would like to open. If you find the uh, empty space on your home screen, so I recommend you see where these dots are. To the left, there's some empty space. If you long press here, you can change the wallpaper you can install a custom theme, you can add the widgets to the home screen, and you can customize the home screen settings. So in the home screen settings here, we have the home screen grid, which is just how many icons can fit on the home screen. So I set this to four times six, which means four icons horizontally, six icons vertically, but you can play around with this here. And then you have the app screen grid. The app screen grid is this right here when you swipe up, okay. So I leave this at default four by five, but you can change this. And the more icons you want, the smaller they get. And then you have the folder grid, which is the size of folders. So let's create a folder. We just long press, drag, and drop and you can see it will create a folder like this and in order to remove a folder you just drag and then drop out of the folder okay so let's do this one more time see drag drop drag and then move out the folder and then drop to add an app on the home screen we slide up to the app drawer we're gonna find the app in question and you just drag then move to the bottom and drop 
If you want to move uh, which page this app is on, long press, and then just drag near the edge, okay, like this. You can see it's going to move the page. Now let's discuss customizing the lock screen. So if we go to the settings, and we're going to find where it says lock screen, tap on this. This is where you can change the lock screen settings, okay. You can see all of these here. So the main things you want to change is where lock screen is, just tap on edit. And this is where you can change, um, you know, the flashlight icon and the camera icon. Those are like the quick actions you saw on the lock screen. So if you just tap on this, you can have a quick action on the lock screen to open an app. We'll do something else. You can add text to the lock screen here. And you can customize these notification icons. Okay, just tap on this. You can change how this looks. You can change how the clock looks and its color. And if we go to the wallpapers, you can change the uh, lock screen wallpaper here as well. So now we've customized the lock screen, we've customized the home screen. Uh, let's talk about navigating the device. So let's say I open up an app here. We have these three buttons. So we have the three lines, the circle, and then the back arrow. So the circle here, this is going to take you to the home screen. Okay, so if you're in an app, it's just going to take you back home. All right. The back button is not necessarily going to take you to the home screen. It's going to take you to the previous page. So if I tap on the back, okay, you can see it bring me to this Google Play search. And if I just tap on the app here and go back, it just brings me to the previous place I was. Okay, so that's what it does. And the triple lines, when you tap on this, will bring you to the multitasking. And this just shows all of the applications which are in the background. And if you slide up, you can close out of an app like this. If you want to close out of all apps from the multitasking, you just tap on close all. And that should help save with the battery life. While using your S23 Ultra, you're going to be having a lot of notifications show up. So to access these notifications, you just slide down from the top once. And you will see the notifications here. If you tap on the arrow, it's going to show the full notification. If you tap on the notification, it will bring you into that app. If you slide to the left or to the right, it will clear the notification. Some notifications cannot be cleared. Okay, so like the voicemail notification. Oh crap, I'm calling someone. Let's uh, stop that. But, uh, some notifications cannot be cleared, as you can see. You do need to address them. You have the notification settings here and the clear to remove all of the notifications. So inside of the notification settings, you can choose which apps you want to have notifications for by turning on or off the toggle. If you just tap on the app itself, you can then specialize what type of notifications you will see. Okay. So let's slide down once again. And you can see these quick toggles here. You just tap them to turn on or off the uh, setting. But if we slide down again, we have the full on uh, control center. So if you tap on the toggle icon, again, you can turn on or off the feature. But if you tap where the text is, let's say torch, you get brought to the settings. So you can change extra settings here. Okay. And we also have the brightness slider here. This is where you change the brightness. We have the power menu if you want to access this. And we have the settings. This will bring you to the settings app. The search bar is just going to search for apps and games. If you tap on the triple dots here, edit buttons allows you to customize which quick toggles you see here. And you just drag and drop. So I'll show you, drag, 
and drop there you go if we go back here to the triple dots we also have the quick panel layout so the brightness control you saw earlier you have to swipe down twice to access but if you only want to swipe down once you can tap on the brightness control and then select show always and then we also have the same with the device control and media output so if you're listening to music or something if you just swipe down once it will show that music but you can change that here and multi sim info if you want the uh if you have two sim cards inserted uh, you can change those settings here so let's talk about the buttons here we've already discussed click, uh, clicking and releasing the power button but if you click and hold this button here we either get the power menu or we're going to get the Bixby uh, button so what I want you to do before we proceed is we're going to open up the settings and we're going to find where it says advanced features and then we're going to find where it says side key and we're just going to set up the power button so if you want Bixby which is a voice assistant when you press and hold Bixby is going to show up this is a voice assistant where you just give commands like hey Bixby what's the time hey Bixby what's the weather like stuff like that okay so we continue show a quick demonstration select the voice allow the permissions so what's the time it's and, 4, PM. and you can see it will help you but the problem is that means that in order to turn off the phone if you have the power button as Bixby you need to press and hold both power and volume down together to get the power menu so what I do personally what you should probably do is just set this to power off menu so you just need to press and hold the power to get to this menu okay so just to summarize what I've done for the past minute we've reprogrammed the power button from waking up Bixby to go into the power off menu so it's nice and simple if you want to take a screenshot you need to click and release both the power and volume down together so click release like this uh, make sure you add enough force on both buttons don't hold these buttons just click release and you can see it's going to take the screenshot like this one thing you'll probably be using a lot is the camera so in the camera app here you just tap you can switch between the modes okay you see this button here this just switches the camera so we have the front camera here okay rear camera you see where these zooms are if you slide with your finger you can change these zooms okay you can go all the way up to 100x you can also tap the buttons to select certain zooms like so uh, we tap on the empty space to exit the zoom menu or you can just tap here we have the settings if you want to change the camera settings the one setting I always change on the S23 Ultra is the selfies so save selfies as previewed uh, definitely turn this one on because the Samsung will, will like flip your front facing camera it's, it's very weird just turn it on on trust me uh, but you have other settings you can play around here as well and let's give a description so to take a picture just tap the button or you can click the volume button if you long press the photo you can start a recording and if you release it will stop the recording if you long press again and you drag to the lock you can now start a recording and even after your hands are released it will still continue so you can pause the recording here zoom and there's the uh, stop button here as well you can also go to the video and just click like this okay if you are recording a video and you just need to take a picture at the same time 
click this button to take the picture as well. And you can also flip the camera while you are uh, recording as well, as you can see right here. Okay. Let's stop that. If we tap on the more, there are some extra modes here you can play around with. For the most part, I don't think I've ever used any of these modes because let's say the night mode, if it's, you know, a night environment, Samsung will automatically take the night picture for you by just being into the photo mode. Portrait mode just removes the uh, background blur. You see, it's like the background, right? And this is like the foreground. So we'll just move the background blur. And it doesn't just apply to faces, it applies to objects which have a clear foreground, like my hand right here. If you like to play with filters, let's uh, tap on the filter button. You see, you can play with the filters. Doesn't need to find the face first. Okay, and you can see you can play with all these filters if you would like. After the picture is taken, you can still add filters. So it's not like you have to do it before the shot. We have the aspect ratio, which is just the, as you can see, changes how much is captured. Three by four will capture the most. Uh, when you do like nine by 16, it just crops the image, zooms in. You also have the timer, which is a countdown for the picture starts. And the flash, which is just like, you know, bright light to help improve the image lighting. Now let's discuss the S Pen here. You may use this all the time. You may never use this. So we click and release and then pull out. And once you've done that, you're gonna have the uh, uh, options here. So if we just tap on, let's say, create note, we can use the S Pen to take notes like this. Okay, you probably wanna like take proper notes. And if you go near to the uh, edges, you can drag to resize this, okay. And you also have a blue bar. When you tap on the blue bar, you can increase the full screen if you want to as well. All right. And you also have a bunch of other options here as well. If you hover over the option, it will tell you what it is. Okay, so if you do need to figure out what it is, just hover over and it will tell you. If we tap on the S Pen menu and we tap on Add, you can customize what S Pen features you have here. So you can just drag and drop the S Pen feature to add it and then tap on the minus to remove. You can also set apps to add into this menu as well. We also have the settings, so you can play with these settings, but I would recommend you have the air actions turned on. Uh, with the air actions, you can see all of these here. How it works is you need to press and hold this pen button and then do the air action, right? So I'm gonna press and hold the pen button, and do like a, there we go. I don't know how to describe that. It's a less than sign. And you can see how it takes me back. And then the up arrow to go home, etc. The main actions I personally use is if you press and hold the S Pen button, it's going to open up the camera. And what's great about this is let's say you're trying to take a selfie, right? If you're older, you're probably too old for that. but. When you want to take a picture, instead of having to tap the button, which may be annoying, you know, because like it's going to make the shot a little bit unstable, you can just click and release the S Pen button here. So I'm going to click release. You see it takes a picture remotely, right? Something like this. And if we double click this button, it flips the uh, camera lens. If you slide while holding down the button, you can see you can change mode. When you do do the gesture, you do have to release the button. If 
before you go again. So if we slide, slide, it's glitching out here. So let's do a slide. Wow, there we go. So you just need to release the button, then press and hold while you do the swipe, then release. So, I mean, it, you see it's a little bit glitchy there, like sometimes it's not swiping across, but uh, that is just an issue with the software. Let's go back into the settings, and there's a ton of stuff to customize, but if you have something you want to change, instead of manually going through, uh, it's going to be quite hard to find some settings, what you can do instead is just tap on the search bar and then search for what you want. So let's search up something. Let's say I want to add a fingerprint. I'm just going to search up for fingerprint. And uh, we can see the fingerprints at the top hits. Uh, if we tap into this, we can see, there we go. It's going to bring you to the setting you'd like. So very useful if you need to find something. I recommend you just search it up first. If you can't find it, most likely the setting will be hidden inside of the advanced features, general management, or the connections area. Okay, so just look at those three. If you still can't find it, you uh, best bet is just to use Google. So that is the intro guide. I mean, there's so much to discover. I would mainly just play around in the settings to do most of the customization. If you would like to help support the channel, please do check the description and there'll be a bunch of videos in the description, like more in-depth guides. Bye-bye.